Hi, good evening. Welcome to Jury Trial Mentor. Tonight, we're going to talk about what's up with Donna Adelson in the coming days. She's still down in Miami, as I know uh, from the latest uh, word, but she is going to be transported by van up there to uh, Tallahassee to face her uh, charges there in court. And before we get into that, though, I'd like to say that I've tried a new software system here. It's actually web-based for hosting this YouTube live. So um, I thank John, my brother, and also Ben Self Productions for getting this all enabled. And we've been working hard. I, I appreciate you guys bearing with us as we try to get these tech problems worked out here for uh, most of this year, actually. And uh, so we're, we're, we're doing a lot of different things, trying different angles. And uh, John's, I'm already on my third camera here. John's got like five or six thousand dollars invested in different cameras. So, um, and now we got a different system here. And uh, as you know, I've, I've tried different internet options. So, hopefully, this will all work good tonight. And um, hopefully, we won't have any sound gap issues and whatnot. So, um, and just to, just to follow on from last time, what I said last time, I spoke from the heart. I spoke on my instincts, and I don't want to get into that tonight. Um, but all I ask you is this. Check and see for yourself if, uh, based on the history of what's recorded, what's presented, and see the evolution of, of uh, things that you've seen before, and, and you, you can come to your own conclusions. The thing is, if you have, if you look at evidence and you look at things that are um, available on YouTube about this case and about people's commentaries, you can really see what um, what takes place and, and come to your own common sense conclusions. So uh, that's all I have to say about that tonight. So let's go ahead and focus in on. Um, on what 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 is going to happen to Donna here? So she's going to have um, her appearance there, initial appearance. And what's going to be interesting is to see who she actually has for an attorney. Is she going to do the same thing that the other folks did and bring up these Miami lawyers into a Tallahassee courtroom that don't know anything about Tallahassee, um, what it's like there to actually try a case with local jurors there, um, what the community is about and whatnot, and, and think about it. The uh, the Adelsons have disparaged that location. These these kind of folks there, they uh, they look down on them and they think of them as sort of like low class, uh, country bumpkin type hicks, Hiawassee Springs kind of thing that was uh, written about in Wendy's book. So this is uh, this is a new terrain and think about it. Donna is in the same jail cell um, facility as her son Charlie. So the poetic justice of that, of both of them hating on Tallahassee so bad, so desperate that they're willing to kill Professor Dan Markell and do such a horrible thing to the kids. Think about the kids and what they suffered and uh, at such a young age and what they've had to grow up and endure. So that that's how cruel and calculated and cold-blooded murder this was and uh, the this despicable hatred that they had that was uh, the utmost evil. So now, now they're... Uh, they're having a face of music. Charlie is going to get sentenced uh, sometime after December 12th, of course. They're, that's just a scheduling conference. So the uh, the actual sentence, which is a mandatory life in prison without parole, will happen sometime in the coming days after that. But for Wendy, uh, excuse me, for Donna, she'll have her initial appearance. And uh, she may have the formal reading of charges. Um, sometimes in different courts, you can ask to have those waived because they have a hard copy right there, so they don't need to have them read out. But these are basically the same charges that we've seen before for the uh, the others like Charlie and and also Katie and Sigfredo and whatnot. So the bottom line is this is going to be a whole new dimension for Donna. She has she's never seen what what it looks like from inside of a jail, jail cell before. The Miami Dade one is pretty nasty and horrible. It's probably even worse than Leon. But wherever you go, the the sounds, the smells, the noises, and all this uh, commotion going on. Um, it's a real transient place. It's 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 going to be a a real horror show for her to have to deal with that at her her age at seventy three. That's really rare to have somebody like that in the age. In fact, all, all my years of uh, doing criminal law, um, you just don't you don't see it or hear much of older people doing that kind of thing, committing murders and uh, having them face uh, pretrial confinement. So if her trial um, is scheduled out for like a year and a half or maybe two years for whatever attorney she hires to defend her, that's that's going to be a long time to deteriorate. And uh, so as to the, which attorney she's going to use, are they going to use a, another more of a white collar defense attorney? Or are they going to use more of a violent crimes type defense attorney? It remains to be seen. 
And I, I'm really curious if they've if they've learned their lesson by having uh, local council versus the uh, Miami council and, and going with the latter, because it just seems like it's number one, going to be a lot more expensive. Number two, like I say, they don't they don't understand the community. They're not going to really fit in. The jury's going to pick up that they're not really locals there. And uh, so it's just it's not going to make a difference for her at all. Um, it's not going to make a difference one iota, but you just think that, you know, trying to have big city lawyers coming out into a, a smaller town like that, swooping in and then trying to basically tell the jury, listen to me and not the local prosecutor. It's just not it's not, it's not a move that I think is very, uh, very sharp. And um, but like I say, it's not going to matter who you get as defense counsel on this case. I think it's going to be rock solid. They got this thing teed up so beautifully. If she would have been a co-defendant on this case with her son, Charlie, they both would have been convicted. You wouldn't have had to present a, a shred of evidence more. They might have wanted to introduce a few more of the tapes, but um, it, it, it's basically another slam dunk. Mark my words, uh, if this does go to trial, she will be convicted. But the thing is, I really think because her her fragility, she's only 112 pounds and the mental pressure, the lack of the meds, I, I think she's really going to really have a hard time with uh, surviving and lasting actually up to the trial. So don't know that for sure, but I, I think that's something to keep in mind that uh, she's in a struggle for not only um, trying to fight the charges and um, and maintain her uh, supposed innocence on this, but she's going to be in for the fight of her life just to mentally try to process everything that's going on. And when she's in that jail, she's probably going to be in a uh, place where they have some older folks that are um, routine jail um, residents there. And uh, I, I don't think she's going to get along with them because she's coming in as a uh, you know doctor millionaire's wife. And they're going to pick up on that and they're going to see that she doesn't fit in and uh, she doesn't have any prison tattoos or heroin lines on her arms and all that kind of stuff. And so she's just not going to she's not going to fit in at all. It's going to be pretty, pretty scary thing. And uh, think about how she's not going to be able to see anybody there in Leon County Jail. She cannot see a single person of her family. She can only talk on the phone. So uh, but now that she's uh, now that she's there, she won't be able to talk to Charlie every day. So keep in mind. She was talking to Charlie every single day when Charlie was in there for a year and a half and never got to see Charlie, but she got to try to reassure him and, and keep him um, um, encouraged that, uh, you know, they had they had the thing in order that to uh, get him acquitted so he could come home. Keep in mind that Charlie even asked the van, van driver, is this the van that you're driving me back to Miami with when my trial's over? So he had he had no clue it was going to hit him. And I think every day, Donna, um, is getting smacked upside the head just unbelievable what kind of shock and awe she's going to be facing here so it's um it's really something that um they never contemplated they thought they were above the law they thought they didn't have to answer to anybody they had political connections that kept them out of the uh the uh charging stage here the indictment stage for this many years but uh thankfully the uh the new leader there jack campbell decided to go after these folks and think about all the all the folks that said that there wasn't any evidence to go against Donna, that uh, Charlie was going to be the only one once they did indict Charlie. So the uh, the evidence is there. The evidence is so overwhelmingly strong. Think about all the naysayers that said that Charlie wasn't going to get convicted or there's only maybe a, a you know, there's a good chance he's going to get a hung jury and all that kind of stuff. And and all that was just so preposterous. And uh, like I say, the uh, the government did a fabulous, fantastic, flawless job in presenting all that information to the jury, not only during the trial with their graphics, but also the way they they uh, weave the graphics into the closing. It was a, it was just the most sophisticated, brilliant, cogent and uh, logical and uh, orderly progression of uh, rolling out the evidence and what what really happened and setting the scene there. So um, just so impressive. And I, I think that gives a shot in the arm to uh, to Georgia and also Sarah. So um, I think that uh, they're they're on track then to uh, go after Donna here and they're ready to uh, bring forth basically the same kind of evidence they had last time. So they they got this down pat. They've gone through this evidence so many times over the years now. They've uh, been able to uh, find out how juries really process this information. And so defense counsel is at a huge disadvantage. They're not uh, whoever has the defense counsel. Um, I, I assume it's not going to be Daniel Roshbaum, so they're going to have to get somebody new. I think it would be very complicated and complex for Roshbaum if he tried to defend um, Donna and Charlie for, for one of the reasons, you know, 
if there is an option to point the finger at Charlie as one of these preposterous uh, defenses that she had nothing to do with it, despite her being on the uh, wiretap uh, tape saying that she's basically it's about her and him. So this is uh, this is going to be very problematic. So I can't see Daniel Rochbaum representing her. There's, there's just too many uh, there's just too many potential conflicts. And so it's going to be fresh counsel. And uh, there's not uh, there's probably not a lot of opportunities for them to uh, to uh, find a counsel ahead of time. If you think about it, she's going to have to re recruit a lawyer that she's not met before. If it's other than this, uh, Mar Marcella, I think her name is from uh, the Miami area. And uh, normally, you know, you think she, she would have been smart about it. She could have like started interviewing attorneys coming up with the strategies and whatnot. Instead, what she, her and Charlie did, which is I, as, as I predicted, once Charlie gets convicted, they're, they're not going to be staying in their condo. I said that they'd, they'd be putting the condo up for sale within six months and uh, having to leave it due to do the fears and uh, extor possible extortion threats. So. Um, as it turns out, within days of his uh, conviction, not just Donna, but also Harvey decided to flee the country. And um, and I think that's uh, also a good indicator of consciousness of guilt for both of them. And uh, when I was talking to John, my brother, about this tonight, he he, he had mentioned that as, uh, as a strong indicator of Charlie's involvement. And I, I totally uh, concur with that assessment because he left behind the, the sunshines that they're willing to kill for. Think about that. They left behind the sunshines they're willing to kill for, left behind their almost $2 million high rise in this pristine area of, of uh, South Beach, all just to get away from the law. And uh, so they would have said goodbye to Wendy. They said goodbye to everything out of fear and running because they knew they were guilty. And that that is not necessary, that kind of uh, indicator of their guilt, but it's such a strong compelling issue for the jury to see their conscious of deal. And it's just going to make the jury be that much quicker in their deliberations. If it goes to a jury, like I say, I don't know that Donna's going to make it. And I think there's a chance that, that uh, Charlie may decide to uh, after, I think it's more likely to happen after he's convicted to go ahead and roll the dice and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to have through my counsel, do a proffer and see about rolling over on Wendy. Cause he, does not like Wendy from what you can gather. He doesn't, uh, he was looking at her during the, the entire time she was on the, the witness stand there in Tallahassee in his trial. And Wendy did not look at him a single time. The prosecutor didn't ask her to identify her own brother, as I recall. And uh, she just wanted to minimize the amount of time she had to be there and get in and out of there and had no concern. You could tell there was no concern at one iota about her brother. So I, I think normally Charlie would not want to plea. He's going to take his chance on appeal. But he may have such anger and, and uh, whatnot towards his sister. After all, he did this for her. And look how how good it turned out for her being able to, to escape that uh, forsaken off the, off the uh, civilization, uh, as you described it, Tallahassee area. So anyway, it's uh, it's going to be very, very much a lot of uh, tw twists and turns. And uh, a lot of this is going to come back to uh, them basically maybe doing a a uh, internal firing squad against each other. And uh, I think maybe Charlie may realize that, you know, mom, you set me up too. You weren't even here for my trial. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, internal family dynamics that we, we can't totally anticipate or predict, but uh, needless to say, it's going to be very much interesting to see how these uh, coming days and weeks fold out. So um, let me, um, let me go ahead and try. Uh, Dr. Cancella, um, <clears throat> I'm betting that she's adjusting more to her own psychology off meds. Yeah, that's what I said the other day that uh, her having to go cold turkey on these meds, the the kind of uh, brain trauma she's going to experience is, is going to be off the charts. And uh, let's see, and I can, hold on, I got to figure out, now I got to remove that. Okay, hide. So... Thanks, Al. I see some of your statement there. Um, yeah, so just to show one more time, Dr. Insel, yes, benzo withdrawal is known to be worse than narcotics by some. I would say um, from what I've known of people trying to get off benzos, in fact, I, I've talked to a doctor who said not a single patient of hers has ever been able to get off benzodiazepine. So whether it's Xanax 
or uh, Valium or uh, the uh, the other one that's um, Clonopin, the longest acting one. And there's a, a, like three or four others in between there. And those kind of things are just, they basically destroy your brain and you can have permanent brain damage from those. So that could also affect things. You know, if people are on the wrong meds and stuff like that, um, or they don't have the meds that they're used to, that, that can definitely cause some kind of brain trauma and uh, it could affect their thinking and what they decide to do in the case, how they lash out or how they respond to interactions with their lawyer. All right, let's see. I gotta go back and find that comment, sorry. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. I picked the same one. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carla. Yeah. Ben has done a great job here. I couldn't have done this without him. And yeah, this is a lot easier. Normally see John or Ben or both of them are working behind the scenes to get this thing off the ground using a program called Ecamm. And, uh, so this stream yard is more for, uh, tech dummies like me that, uh, that uh, is easier to walk through. So, so far it's working good. If there's any issues with sound, um, let me know. Ben, if you could just text me if there's any issues with sound, please. All right, just trying to find some, if you could put a question, I'm not seeing any questions. I should have said that initially. So if you guys could put any uh, questions mark there. All right, just trying to find some more questions here. The um, Judy D. Hey, Carl, I haven't seen anything new enough. Search been re-watching Wendy's testimony. It's very painful. Yeah, it is. It is uh, something that is uh, very definitely uh, provable that she not only lied but lied in major ways, numerous instances um, throughout not just one, two, but all three of these trials. In fact, I think it got worse. I think from uh, wearing my prosecutor hat, this last time it was so damaging against her. I mean, she was able to call the FBI and rebut the uh, the things like the unfettered access to the kids and whatnot. So that is definitely something that um, that uh, they, they got her on as at a minimum. And what I would do is charge her for all three and then all of her statements are going to come in and then i'd also play her the uh five-hour interview with detective isom i'd go through all that and uh, pick out the the real indicators either by her words or body language or her fake crying and whatnot all that kind of stuff because the more the more a jury looks at that the more it's going to sink in and and they're going to realize this was all this is all orchestrated and it was all staged and it was all re it, it was all rehearsed So Fordor Glory says he still considers Fibber's weasel any convictions other than perjury. Um, no, that's that's not going to happen. Um, and I've done I've done so many trials that the um, you know the evidence you can easily determine how a jury is going to interpret it if you've been a, a trial attorney with a with um, a lot of different types of cases, a lot of felonies, and also a lot of violence and, and violent crimes. You have a lot of heated emotions more you do to any kind of civil case and the um it's it's just so explosive a lot of stuff there and you really get to cross-examine people a lot more um a lot more robust than you can in a civil court because it's actually a constitutional right to cross-examination and so uh, in civil courts you don't have the constitutional aspect of it so that's why it's really something that uh is is something you can really see the sparks flying and it's really easy to show a liar in court because their body language says it all. And, and just look at how you can tell who's lying. Look at how Luis Rivera was coming across as very credible when uh, Wendy, who was, uh, had all the education above him, was not able to come across credible. And you could tell all these different lies. You could tell by her body language. You could tell by her eye squeezings when she's lying and that kind of stuff. So, And uh, think about it. So Wendy will be called not only um for the these these past trials that, that went to trial but she's also going to be called against her own mother so it's really it's really going to be uh, interesting if this does go to trial to think that wendy's then helped convict her mom and her brother
Yeah, he, uh, that's true. Um, Charlie did try to get a disability when uh, work dried up after murder was in the news. Yeah, he was looking for a way to, to, to scam the system because he wasn't getting patients uh, like he was before. So a lot of these doctors, he, was, he had like about a dozen different clinics he went to. And uh, th those were the kind of things that um, that uh, dried up. So he's looking for do it to a, do a scam from what you can see on uh, some of these YouTube channels where they're uh, talking about it. So sorry, I'm not trying to pick on the same one. I was actually looking at the question instead of the name. And uh, so I'm, I'm not trying to play favorites here. I know some people have, uh, uh, get upset if I call the same name. <clears throat> Wendy's probably jumping for joy that she's not going to prison. Well, what makes you say that, Shaquille? She's not in prison yet, but the uh, all this stuff about that you're hearing about what she's trying to do, some lawyer up in Atlanta about this, uh, this deal about um, some kind of a immunity some kind of uni escape escape clause uh legal premise to try to escape uh any charges i don't i don't see that happening i, I think it's all just a, a sham um defense and it's just designed to just it's a public media relations blitz that's all it is and i know um i know that was even said by the uh, former uh miami prosecutor down there dave Ehrenberg. so it's nothing to worry about that that's not going to affect anything at all okay mike tadlock do we know essentially someone who's emotional and someone who's passionate um well i would say if you don't have passion as a as a trial attorney you're really um lacking in, in what what it takes to really get the jury to to believe you and believe in your case and your cause that you're presenting so if you're flat, if you're monotone, and you you don't have any excitement or passion in, in your case, then guess what? The jury's not e gonna either, and they're just gonna be tuned out to it. So, um, I would I would say emotional. That's more you're like you're going off the rails. You're not making any sense. You don't. Um, you're just uh, speaking out of anger, or um, you can cry and stuff like that to try to um, overcome the things that are going on in the trial that you can't control and, and you realize your case is uh, falling apart. So you, you got to maintain your composure, but you got to hit them hard with your words. You got to have voice inflections that, that are appropriate. You got to talk aloud when you need to. And a lot of times I like on cross an examination, I'll talk very loud when I know that they're lying because I want the jury to catch them in that, that time of lying. So it's sort of like what you what you'd have to do in actual like a movie type of a script you got to you got to make this thing come alive and as i always say uh folks that i'm mentoring you got to you're sort of like a movie director and you got to make the facts come alive and you got to bring out the personality of the of the uh, witnesses pro or con to your case where you got to know what their agenda is and know how to either harmonize or contrast it with your case <clears throat> All right, well, here we got, um, yeah, not not. it's not fun to be in Adelson. I mean, I, I can't imagine uh, what what is going through Wendy's mind now, how she's scrambling to try to uh, to deal with the fact that she's lost now her babysitter and uh, her mom. Or Think about it, Char Harvey's like almost 80 now, and uh, he, he's not going to be able to want to take two, two 13, 14-year-old kids off her hands. So that's going to be, it's going to be something that's very, um, very different for her. And Another interesting thing is she never once went up. She never went up, obviously, to visit Charlie when he was in jail for that year and a half. But as far as we know, she never talked to him either. So now it's going to be interesting to see, does she talk to mom? Is there going to be daily calls to mom? Obviously, she's going to want to talk to Harvey, uh, Donna will. But is she going to be also talking to Donna? Supposedly, they did have dinner together um, like a week or two before the trial. So um whether there was there's going to be a fallout now over this and whether she's um going to still try to protect wendy and in any event there's going to be some kind of dynamics at play like i say where there could be an internal firing squad among them to see how it shakes out for their own hide is it going to be in a self-preservation mode or are they still going to circle the wagons around wendy Yeah. Okay. So she may walk. Um, Kim, the justice junkie, she may walk. Okay. Well, what do you base that on? Have you looked at all the evidence? Have you actually studied it for many hours? Have you um, put it, put it together to see 
how many indicators there are that uh, I've covered before, both on an individual YouTube with John, as well as uh, Surviving the Survivor. There was a, a much better list I compiled that I did more deep dive research on it. And we got up to 92 on that. And there's so many indicators in that. And uh, all it takes is one indicator, keep in mind. If you, if you see there's one indicator for you, there's gonna be other indicators for other folks as well. So it's gonna be a very, very, uh, very strong case there's no doubt in my mind and you just got to have a prosecutor's willing to go after it all right let's see i'm looking for questions here I'm trying to scroll. Oh, i got to scroll down further here okay sorry Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk about uh, rehash the stuff from last time. So thank you for uh, <clears throat> thank you for your support of Fifey, I think it is. <clears throat> that Jane, okay, this one here says Wendy repeatedly says in testimony that Jane named him a suspect, but Jane had just had a nice long stroll with Jane and planted fresh meat in her, in her mind. Yeah. So there was, um, if you listen to the tape on the interview there where they brought in Jane and Jane, if I remember correctly, she was the one that said, well, what about Jeff, Jeff LaCasse? So anyway, it, it just looks sort of staged and rehearsed. And Wendy was trying to play dumb because all that was part of the act. Like somebody would have done this for her and she had no idea this was going on. So that that's what I think is, um, a key indicator as well that um of all people the way she framed jeff and then she didn't bring up bring him up in the interview that she relied on somebody else i think that's also very telling <laughs> yeah uh here's a good one from uh daz larson i wonder what old harvey's up to international man of mystery and uh yeah so apparently he did not take off on the flight he decided to stay behind and uh so I think he's too old. Can you imagine Harvey trying to survive in a foreign country where he doesn't know a soul, even though his uh, son, Charlie, might have set up some contacts there for them to flee to when he was uh, had all those years to plan um, for what they would do in the event the law, long arm of the law was finally coming after him. So. Yeah, so Caroline asked, will they have an Arthur hearing for Donna and when? I, I'm sure they will. I mean, she's going to try to spring out of there. So I just think that they're going to have um, a hard road to to be able to uh, to try to get the judge to let her out. And uh, the fact that she fled, think about it, what, what helped keep Charlie in was the fact that he's talked about killing that undercover cop. And also he was looking at fleeing the country. Well, she actually was stopped fleeing the country. So she's not getting out. There's no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I am right now, I am uh, at a remote site in uh, Tennessee. So I have a virtual office out of Texas. And so that's that's why um, that's why I'm licensed in Texas. I'm not licensed in Tennessee, nor do I need to be because I don't do I don't do state court law here. But um, all right. Hello, JPJ. I recognize your name. Yeah, there's some questions here about what was going on in court TV, TV, court TV last night. I'm just going to let that issue lie. You guys, like I say, do your own research. You don't have to take my word for any of that. Do your own research and come to your own conclusions. And, uh, okay, gl glad we got sound. Everything's working good. Thanks, Ben and John. I'm not seeing a lot of questions here. Uh, let's see. Debbie Martin did get notification. No idea why. Well, I just I just put this out like 30 minutes before I went live. So sorry about that. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this tonight. I was sort of playing it by ear. I've had a busy day here, but um, <laughs> all right. Some of this stuff I'm not going to rehash, but um, yeah, Debbie Fox. Uh, I recognize your name. The judge 
thought he saw Donna on her plane from Paris. Do you think she was mistaken? And um, so, you know, that that's a possibility. I, I've heard that they were in Italy during the time of Charlie's trial. So maybe they were coming back and we're going to right away go back to Dubai. But that doesn't make sense why they come back to the United States unless the... Um, and was she talking about a flight like the day before or whatever? So it might have been a few days before where they just came by back to say their final goodbyes. And um, and then they got nabbed trying to leave. So that that's my that might be the case. I, I don't have those kind of details. We'll, we may find that out in the coming days. G. Griffin asked, will they, Wendy receive special treatment due to her age being in the jail there? So. I think there is a little bit of different treatment in terms of like, they'll probably put her where there's not such a, a younger group of folks that uh, would probably be more inclined to pick on her and be, uh, be threatening to her and whatnot. So, but like I said, there's probably not even anybody um, within 20 years or 25 years of her age. So she's going to really stick out like a sore thumb. And uh, I, 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 you know, some people are saying they think she's going to be sort of like a, a mother there for the other women. I don't see that at all. I think she's going to be an outcast. I think they're going to look at her as um, being a rich lady that uh, that looks down or knows at them. And, and so that's not going to bode well for her. So here, uh, Wendy, the master manipulator. Do you know if Wendy had actually an, had an offer on that house? If not, it may be a manipulative tactic to get Donna panicking and Charlie jumping. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that, and I don't know if um, anybody has researched. But that's a good, insightful comment to uh, to ask and uh, do research for. So that that could have been a ruse to basically just make it, uh, yeah, to get them to uh, to uh, jump in and help her and say, no, 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 don't, don't, don't sit, plant your roots there. We we got a we got a backup plan, right? We're going to get you out of there, despite the judge's ruling against you. Yeah, this part here, um, Jody. Did you hear about the part where Wendy's testimony about the TV man? She almost slips and says hit man. So, yeah, I don't um, I don't remember that specifically, but I know other people have talked about it. And I think that's that's one of the things that happens when somebody's lying. They slip up like that. They're so nervous about keeping their script in their own mind. But um, invariably, different things blurt out and, and those kind of things. Um definitely are picked up by the jury just like when she maybe says no but is shaking her head yes some of that is just uh involuntary stuff that uh people don't have any control over but the, but the body the body has a way of uh, of revealing that and that's why we say body language is 90 percent of communication because they pick up on all that you know, as they should All right, here's somebody in McKinney, Texas. Okay, Law RN. That's interesting. Uh, so you're a nurse and a lawyer or something. Do you think they can get Harvey on accessory after the fact, capital felony on the way, one way ticket and restaurant meeting with Charlie? And uh, well, I think that that would be uh, a lesser burden of proof to go do accessory if um, you look at the. Um, him fleeing as well that could be conscious of guilt that is that helps carry the bar over for proof you do want some proof that he was involved in the planning and so i think that if you look at it from a number of perspectives from the fact that he gave the lexus to to katie it went directly from in his title to uh katie's in katie's name and i think of the purchase price of 1600 dollars. so granted charlie would have been a sort of a middleman broker for that as well but what, what they were also doing was trying to keep it on the down low. Because keep in mind, Charlie mentioned, remember Charlie mentioned the Dolce Vita tapes. He said something about, you know, it's not like I bought you a Bentley or something like that. So was, he was trying to reassure Katie that, don't worry, we got this under wraps. We haven't been like showering you with all kinds of gifts and money and noticeable, um, super expensive items, hundreds of thousands of dollars that's going to draw your attention to law enforcement. So that's was so obvious to me that that's why he was saying that to her because she was she was getting nervous she was freaking out and so what was he doing he's trying to calm her he's trying to reassure her. if you look at the language he was talking about like you know your dna could be in the car but it doesn't matter they have to put you at the scene however he said that that all shows that um that he was trying to strategize and, and figure out a way to not only calm her down but also get rid of this bump guy and so my theory is that what happened is 
they try to they try to split the baby. They didn't know if the uh, the threat was from law enforcement or from a Markel investigator, and they also didn't want to not pay it and maybe have some something bad happen. So I think they did both. I think they talked uh, had, uh, if you recall, Donna talked tough to the undercover agent, telling the buzz off. I mean, she got she actually got really tough with him. It was really really surprising. The uh, and I think a lot of that was fear driven and her her defiance to be. Uh, thinking that this guy's going to mess with them. And then, um, and then I think that that's what that birthday gift was for, for, um, Sigfredo. Why would Charlie give Sir Fredo a birthday gift? Right. And what, what do you think was in that gift? It was an, it was the $5,000 that was demanded. So, uh, they were talking, um, in, in hushed tones where he wasn't going to come out and actually say, I gave the $5,000. Cause I think it's apparent to me that they were still concerned about wiretaps and whatnot. So, all that folds in nicely with prosecuting these folks. And like I say, when you got a conspiracy going on, the evidence against one has a carryover effect to a lot of others. You need a lot less proof to do that, especially if you try more of them together. So if Harvey was to be rolled up and prosecuted with the other Adelsons, the more Adelsons you have in the, in the uh, firing chamber at a, at a trial, I, 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 from my experience, that's the easier standard of proof you have. But there's still a standalone enough to go each at one at a time. <clears throat> this is a good question. Will Donna's attorneys be so brazen as to make up a whole new story for one or one that has nothing to do with the extortion? Well, the uh, obviously she did not testify at Charlie's trial. Charlie said he told his mother that. So that if they're going to have Charlie testify and they may do an order for him to testify as well, like they did Donna. So think about it. You got Charlie's going to have to lot be locked into his testimony if he doesn't say what he said in his trial in his own defense, then they then Georgia and Sarah could impeach him with that. So it means it's, it's going to be a hot mess defense for them. So, um, I mean, I, I would imagine that maybe they're going to use the same kind of extortion defenses to have consistency. But uh, on the flip side of that, as a trial strategist, it's like, why would you use a, a method that was an abysmal failure? And it was basically just so ridiculous that that you had zero chance absolutely zero chance of ever having any jury believe it. It was that bad. Yeah, the Mark Hills need to start finding hard for custody. Well, you know, Wendy's still the mother. Wendy's still the mother of them. So unless she's arrested, I mean, if she's arrested and, and held in confinement for a pretrial for murder one, then I think that's that's a great thing. And that'd be the best way to do it. So I, I don't think that's in the Mark Hills hands at all. So despite her being uh, enshrouded with these other uh, folks, either convicted or uh, pending charges for murder one, the, uh, the other Adelsons, you know, right now, Wendy's walking the streets and not having an answer for uh, for her actions on this. Colleen, I yeah, I, I just don't I think she's going to be talking to some, but I, I think she's not she's not going to connect with them. You know, Charlie can, is the kind of guy that. He can he can he likes to talk to people of all backgrounds of all ages i think he want he's a maestro he's going to be able to push people's buttons get them to do what he wants and, and be, be impressive to them with uh with all of his talk so um donna on the other hand i mean she is so so steaming angry in there like i say um and others have said here i, I think with the uh, mental anguish she's going to go on through being off these meds Don't they have to just let you be on your meds in prison? Yeah, you, you know, a lot of that changes. So based on where your jurisdiction is, I think jails are less likely to give them the meds. Um, and so would Charlie look like he was on something, though? So they may eventually give him some meds, but I think initially when they in-process them, they definitely uh, do not give them all their same meds. So if they came in, you know, a lot of these, think about it. When she got rolled up, she, she probably didn't have, um, she probably didn't have necessarily all of her meds with her. But then again, if she, I guess if she is flying on an overseas flight, she probably probably did have some of those on her. But um, in any event, the um, they're not going to let her take those meds in the prison. She's going to have to uh, wait for a new prescription because they don't trust that there's not contraband and illegal drugs in there. So all those would have been thrown out. Okay, judge thought that Donna's attorney was on the plane, not Donna. Okay, I'm not I'm not aware. Um, I'm not aware of that part of it. So um, those those are two different uh, 
schools of thought and what the conversation might have been about. Why did the police allow Wendy to have her friends during the interview with the police the first time? Yet T Lemon, that's uh that was a really bizarre thing, but but think about it. After 40 minutes in, she's pretty much cleared. They treated her as she, as she was a victim, not a suspect. They did that quick interview, and Detective Isom pretty much thought that, well, okay, this is uh she's cooperative. What attorney would invoke? And she's thrown out other possible people that might have done this for her and stuff like that. I mean, they they uh um they had it uh where they thought that uh she, she was she was not part of this and that's why they let the victim advocate come in there that's why they let her friend come in there you would never have that in a normal situation where somebody was a, a true suspect of uh of a murder charge of their ex-husband so um but the, the 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 benefit of that though is you get to see her keep talking you get to see the uh in the uh call with with donna and uh that that weird interaction she had down there and um and remember when she got a phone with Donna, she says, well, see, at least my my parents sound surprised. So she was even like basically saying her parents could have been a part of this as well. So it was just so all poorly, poorly, uh, poorly planned and orchestrated. But it, it did the job for that night. But any jury looking at that and studying it is going to see it for what it is, a complete, complete sham um, uh, rehearsed acting job. All right, if you could, uh, if you, here's a question, okay. Yeah, if you don't put question there, I'm, I'm probably gonna skip over it. You may have a good question, otherwise may miss it. So Peggy asked, won't it be very tricky for the prosecution to find independent evidence that did not have its beginning with Wendy's testimony given the immunity she was given? No, absolutely not, Peggy. Um, the, uh, if you think about it, the, uh, the immunity was given at trial. So what did she say at the trial that was different than at the, at the uh, initial interview by Detective Isom? The, anything that they said at the, uh, that she said at trial, um, they have, they have the independent evidence. She did not lead them to, uh, she did not lead them to Jeff Lacasse in her statement in court. She did an initial interview through her friend Jane, but you know, folks like uh, Jeff Lacasse, that's not going to be an issue. And uh, she did not give them any leads to follow up on other than her parents. So, um, but there was no derivative proof of what she had for uh, how they're involved. She basically was trying to say that they're exonerated. So, so basically that's a form of a lie that she said. So the, um, I, I just don't see that the, uh, the immunity that she has is going to be an issue at all. And um, so, and then if you lie, so if you did have any immunity, all you got to do is show that they were lying and then our immunity protection is gone. So let's just say even if she did have ironclad immunity, let's just say you were right on this. It doesn't matter. You got her in lies. And so that's all it's um, going to uh, matter in, in the end of it, because uh, she's not going to win on any kind of uh, motions and limited to try to get that thrown out. Yeah, I think they're going to be the same ones. I mean, to be a principal, uh, as they call it in Florida, other jurisdictions call it a co-principal. If you have anything to do with aiding, abetting, um, helping coordinate, plan, assist, counsel, encourage, um, those kind of words are so broad and encompassing. So in, in other words, all it would have taken is like, Wendy, we're going to take care of the problem. Let us know when when we need to have the hitman come up there. And if she says it, when she sent that email out and says, okay, Dan, are you home? The uh, 14th to 18th of July. That's all it takes right there. That one single act is all it takes. I had a case that's uh, even reported to the uh, highest one, one level below the Supreme Court where somebody did one simple act like that and they are convicted of rape. A simple act did not even lay a hand on the woman. Why? Because that kind of instruction was in the same case I used as a prosecutor and I got the conviction. And you know what? Nobody in my office thought I could get a conviction. They didn't, but the evidence was there. They just thought, well, if somebody doesn't even touch somebody, how are they gonna, how is anybody gonna feel like it's just to convict them of, um, of, of a rape? But you know what? The rape stood through uh, all the appeals process and uh, is still standing there today. And so it, it doesn't take a whole lot. So that's why I'm, I'm saying to y'all, if you look at these indicators and the list is being updated 
to include stuff that went on this last trial, these indicators will actually reveal so, so much that it's actually an easy case to win. And uh, it's not going to it's not going to be it's not going to be this insurmountable thing where, where um, that you're hearing. that's like that it's uh, in, impossible to get a conviction. It's not. And uh, and we'll see how it bears out. Obviously, I'm not the prosecutor in the case, but if I was a prosecutor in the case, I'd have no problems taking this trial and uh, doing it many, uh, many, many years ago at that. CV Wonderful is asking if she's allowed to leave the country. Yes, um, as uh, far as I know, because uh, even though she's an unindicted co-conspirator, I think they may uh, be keeping tabs on her, but I think she would be able to leave because they're not, um, I don't think they're that ready to go after her just yet. If they were more closer to the time that they're ready to indict her, uh, then I would say that, yeah, they would, they'd do the same thing they did to her mom. But She's probably not going to leave the country after seeing what happened to uh, to her mom <laughs> as well. So, and having having two kids in tow as well, teenagers, I think it'd be a lot harder to uh, escape. And I just wonder what? How did they say goodbye to the kids? How did Donna and Harvey say goodbye to the kids? What did they tell them? If I was law enforcement investigators, I'd be finding out coming in the neighborhood, coming through who their friends are, and finding out what they told their friends and stuff like that, and use that as a trial as well. Yeah, this uh, this question here, can we make a citizen's arrest on one you given all the evidence? Yeah, citizen's arrest um, for most states, that has to do with like seeing a felony in the act of progress. So this is not an act in a felony in, in, in progress. So therefore, we rely on law enforcement to do their jobs. So I do believe that the, if this was allowed to stay in the FBI channels, that this this whole thing would have been wrapped up many years ago. But uh, polit politics got in the way and... Uh, that's uh, that's what derailed this for so long, unfortunately. Bruce says Adana needs a Perry Mason. Now, Perry Mason, he's he's not going to help uh, be able to help this at all. I mean, there's no chance. There's no chance she has on this. I said the same thing about Charlie. Look how quick that jury came back. It was just you could just feel you could feel the momentum that Sarah and Georgia had. You could just feel the utter embarrassing collapse that Rochbaum had. And uh and he just tried to bore him to sleep with a two and a half hour closing. It just was basically just just rambling nonsense. And uh, I don't I don't fault him for not having a good good defense because there was not one available. You can't just create your own defense when they got all this tapes of um, evidence against your client. Han says that uh, Wendy tried to frame Lacoste before the hit. She was involved, so. That, that is such a strong indicator. And I was so happy to see that Georgia actually used that word frame. You know, she framed Jeff Lacoste. Who frames somebody if they don't know a murder is going to happen? That one indicator alone, um, if you had a trial on that, you'd have probably uh, almost a unanimous verdict at that. But then you got all these other in indicators as well. So that's what's really going to carry the day as well. So. So PJ Nick says Harvey's not just a millionaire; he's a mul multiple, multiple millionaire. Yeah, you know what? The uh, they still got that. They still got the condo down there. I don't know how many other assets they got. They put a lot of stuff in trust and whatnot. But the um, th they're bleeding a lot because think about it. They got to come up with millions more now for defense lawyers for Charlie, um, the huge retainer that a lawyer will want for Donna, and uh, you know then they're going to need one for uh, Wendy when it's her time as well. So they're, they're trying to plan all this out. They're running scared right now as to Wendy. They definitely are. Does this kind of stuff looking for a immunity lawyer up north in Atlanta? Yeah. Is that does that sound like somebody's not worried about getting arrested as well? Yeah, D Donna's gonna have to go back to her teaching profession on the inside. Yeah, I think um I think that uh I don't I don't know if she's going to get a chance to even have any books to uh, teach anybody if they want to listen to her right now, because frankly, knowing a grandma there is on murder one charges. It's, it's just like a it's just something you, you don't see. It's just so it's just so bizarre that uh, how they're going to interact and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's going to be really, really interesting. I bet you the jailers are really wanting to see an interaction, too, to see how it shakes out. Brad asks, has any media reached out to the strange Adelson son for his reaction? You know, I don't know about that, but I, you know, isn't, isn't that so, so sad that, um, 
that their uh their younger son, I believe his younger son, that he he's got to suffer through this and having having his uh his family um dragged through the mud like that. But just think of what an honorable the guy that is. He's the dead set opposite of uh the other blood relatives of his. He's a stand up guy. He does great things as a doctor for other people, and uh, the fact that he spoke out about his family this way. And um, that they had nothing to do with them after this because he knew that they were guilty. So if I was going after Wendy, I would definitely bring him on as a uh, star witness for the, the prosecution because he would talk about how how um, Wendy was acting with conscious of guilt um, after this and everything that she said. So um, we have not seen a statement from a, a police interview or whatnot, but I, if I was a prosecutor, I'd definitely get a, a statement from him. And uh, I'm, I guarantee you he's got interactions with all of them that indicated their guilt. And that's why that's why he couldn't have anything to do with them, because they're all part of this killing, uh, killing against Dan Markell. Um, Andy School. Hello, I remember your name. Does anyone else think maybe Charlie did this to be the favorite son more for love since he wasn't as great a student as Rob or Wendy, plus his choice of dates had to just point Donna. And uh, I think, yeah, I think he he was chosen and selected because he always bragged about his connections with the underworld, the criminal element. And so I think it was a, a perfect match and I think he was willing to do it. And he was uh, so he would have been so cocky talking about how they can get away with this. And he's got it all planned out and and they rehearsed what how it was going to go down. They rehearsed the TV code among themselves. And um, that hitman joke was probably. Um, I, I don't know if it was something that they intended for uh, the police to hear about it that day, but because other people had heard about it, maybe they decided to get it out in the open and act like, well, of course, who would hire joke about it to that many people about hiring a hitman that, and we're actually going to hire the hitman and do it later? I mean, what kind of idiots would we be? But I think that there's that um, that much realizing that, okay, in the past year, we did talk to other people about hiring a hitman, so as a joke, supposedly. But there was true motives behind it, and they did want that to happen. And so they had to get front and center and, and take the sting away from the uh, from the prosecutors. Ah, it's just a joke. It's not a big deal, officer. I mean, he said it a lot. And I mean, who talks like that? Why would it, why would anybody allow some, somebody to talk that way about um, the um, the father of uh, the boys? Yeah, Rashbaum had that same Freudian slip. Yeah, I remember about that. I can't, I can't remember exactly what the uh, what the slip up was, but it had to do with some witness and uh, somebody could refresh our memories here. Melissa, I would say that uh, the boys. There's a good chance maybe that the Markells. I know the uh, the um, grandfather Phil. I know he's got an awesome pad. It's like a multi million dollar mansion with a huge pool in um in california that uh, i would uh, that's my first guess where the boys would go and then the other family members could uh obviously fly to the states and get to see them all and whatnot so um don't know for sure they'd probably initially go to state custody uh just as a transition till they go to um one of the um one of the markels and i don't know how the international aspects of that would have affected if they, if they if there wasn't a, a place in the united states where would they allow them to go overseas i i think that would be a little bit more problematic but that's why i think probably california is uh is the best option and smartest option and, and uh, like i say it, it's it's like a resort that they would have there and it's, it's just so sad to think that boys are missing out on that wonderful tough, wonderful uh grandfather of phil it's just it's just sick and cruel. And uh, I would I would never, if I was a defense lawyer and I knew my client was doing that, I would never allow them to uh, get away with that because it actually is something that um, makes them look a whole lot guiltier. And I think that the um, the jury, when they hear about the denial of visitation of the Markells, they will be fire blood boiling mad. Uh, I'm telling you, they, they, will, they will be so eager to get back there and convict her one little shred of evidence indicating that she was knowledgeable about it the drive to the crime scene not caring about the kids there obviously anybody as i've said before on the channel that anybody that's willing enough to deny visitation to all these markels after their son has gunned down the kid's father you're you're cruel and cold enough to to kill their dad if you're going to deny a visitation so that that like i say that all that combined is just going to lower the bar what the prosecution needs to to get a conviction and it's just common sense it's common sense and juries get it 
and the folks in Tallahassee are, are, are uh, have that kind of common sense and uh, they would ab absolutely return a verdict of guilty against uh, Wendy. Was uh, Rashmam allowed to interview Wendy ahead of her testimony? Hey, Mana, the, uh, yes, he was, but he never did a deposition on her. He only did two depositions um, from what I'm, from what I'm gathering from different sources. The only ones he did was on Amy Adler, the NYU prof law professor that was the uh, serious girlfriend that Dan had before he got murdered. And the other one was the neighbor. Remember the neighbor that uh, called 911 and indicated the, that uh, something going on in the garage and looks like um, Dan Dan had been hurt. So those are the only two people he did a deposition on. So um, he was allowed because she was a state's witness. He absolutely would have had a right to call um, a dep request a deposition for Wendy, just like the state had requested a deposition when they saw that uh, Harvey and Donna were on the defense witness list. So yeah, that's normal. Chip's dad says attorneys have advised Wendy not to leave the country. I am sure. Well, that's um, that's something that that I would say the um, you you would think, but you never know. I mean, a lot of times there's a lot of stuff I think that goes on with attorneys and uh, their clients that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, including common stuff and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, that would make sense that attorneys say, "Hey, look, don't you like your mom?" because they probably have the same tabs on you. But, um, you know, maybe let's do it a different way and try to escape using uh, some kind of charter plane or something like that where they don't have to go through um, all those TSA employees. All right. So. Scusi Flea says the Trescott drive statements are going to the crime scene is the most damning evidence, in my opinion. Yeah, that I mean, all the lies she's told on that. I know there's some great video that was put out there um, in the last day or two about all the different stories she's told on Trescott. And, and what I'd argue is the prosecutor is like, all these lies are happening because it shows consciousness of guilt. She knew she was there for the reason to check on uh, Dan and make sure these bumbling knuckleheads that they had hired for over $100,000 to come up there and kill Dan Markell. She's fed up, sick and tired of waiting for it. And her life was about to change if Dan didn't get uh, put out of the picture. So, yeah, that's yeah, that shows that shows that she could not wait. That just shows the amount of hatred she had, and that's what I'd argue as a prosecutor. So Donna is gonna, uh, I would assume, at least a year and a half. I, I think the uh, her diminished mental and physical capacities, being able to hold out in that jail for that long, uh, are just really gonna, um, it really gonna wear on her, and I. I, I'm just thinking, and my gut, my instincts tell me she's not going to make it to trial. And uh, I, it remains to be seen. But if a trial's a year and a half out, she's got to sit there and live without her all of her luxury attachments and stuff like that. Can only talk to people on the phone. The only folks that she can know face to face that she can talk privately to is her lawyer. And so, what? How much can you talk to your lawyer about? Hey, you know, uh, I'm. Um, we're here to talk about your your legal case, go over the evidence, stuff like that. It's it's not a social talk, uh, very much at all. You, you do some initial um, chit chat, and then you get right into the heavy uh, heavy details if you're visiting your client like that. So, it's um, it's just going to be very um, appropriately fitting that she's there, given her involvement in that. Yeah, that's. Uh, Shivani, I totally agree. I think a lot of jurors would, uh, would believe that as well. That was sort of a cover story. I mean, they, they had, they didn't plan this thing out for a long time. And then think about it when, remember she said in March, Hey, I got an idea for, uh, for dad's birthday present. And she's all hush hush about it with uh, Charlie on the text. And then she was in that bathroom in Gainesville. And, uh, think about it. That was the time in March where Dan had just filed, I think it was March 14th. He'd filed the uh, long filing in court that indicated she was not fit to be a law professor based on her misconduct in, in the uh, divorce proceedings. So that was a very serious blow. They were going, it, there was uh, allegations there that um, they were going after her for contempt of court and sanctions. If you're found in contempt of court as a lawyer, you're automatically going to be let go as a law professor. So Dan had that over her head and, um, and she wasn't about to let that happen. So that's why things got delayed out. And I think that's why the urgency of this happened. I think the jury would easily pick up on that and come to the same conclusion. So private eye posse. Hello. Uh, yes, she did. But Donna's mouth 
came open and she was the one on the plane go back and rewatch so i don't i don't know the uh full uh story on that one why would she flee if she wasn't guilty all right looking for questions here scrolling down Okay, Jessica, A, would you explain what happened next if there was a hung jury? Do you think Donna would have still been arrested after the fact? So I think I think that there would have been a, uh, if there was a hung jury for Charlie, I think that there was going to be, um, he was to be subject to retrial. So I think they would have retried him and maybe gone after if she was still fleeing. I, I would hope so, but you never know. It, it makes it sort of sound like they were, um, they weren't that, uh rambunctious go after her right away but i, I think they're building up she would have been arrested before christmas that's what i think the plan was uh as it turns out but then when they saw caught wind that she was uh escaping the country that's why they decided to go never right away but um yeah i mean the evidence is strong against all these folks i, I just don't i just don't get it not not i would say it's a uh, such a slam dunk against harvey but definitely something that you can uh build upon and Tamara Demko, if you look at her testimony, she's got some really good stuff about how Charlie acted. So you package that all up on Charlie, and like I say, you got a co-conspirator, you got a murder, and you got the whole family that did it. The family uh, carryover factor is something that really is uh, makes that case that much easier, and I hope the prosecution understands that. so uh laura Berger, i said that about the house the other night yeah okay you guys are getting it i mean like i say there's so many indicators here just one indicator is all it takes for a jury to in their gut to feel like they did the right thing they do the uh voting to convict and they can go home and sleep good at night whether it's donna whether it's harvey whether it's wendy and charlie the jurors are all going to feel the same way it's like you know what Prosecutor did a great job. We believe this was a family hit job. The family was a collective effort of hate and a collective effort of uh, efforts to get Dan killed. No questions about it. So let me scroll down here. Yeah, simply Tanika, the family is so enmeshed that we mix up Wendy, Donna, Charlie, and Harvey. Yeah, I mean it's it's something that um, that uh, I, I I accidentally slip up in the names as well because you, so, there's so many names. Think about it swirling around in your head when you're talking about this case, and uh, so it's easy to get tripped up on the names. And I've seen other people do that as well. So I think it's uh, I think it's a natural thing, but. And I think uh, I think I saw it in the trial too. I think Rajbom even did that once or twice. All right, some of the same questions here. Which Wendy lie from the three trials is the most prosecutable for perjury? So. I think the one that's really telling, I think the, uh, the, the book, she lied about the book that she says in the uh, afterward of her book, that the book is based on largely her life. And what she's saying in court is largely based on the, uh, the life of, uh, a friend of hers. And then you look at all the other similarities of her life, um, uh, because of Josh, the supposed husband of Lily, the character that represents her, Josh was from Montreal. That's where, uh, or excuse me, Toronto, I get those two mixed up, but um, uh, Toronto, I believe it is, that where Merkels were from. And so same thing about the book, makes fun of uh, Florida State University. She calls it Northern uh, Florida State University. She said she couldn't remember. I mean, if you go and pick apart every little detail that she said and, and, and all these trials, like, I mean, just, just a whole litany of them. And then look, think about what the uh, FBI agent said about the visitation being denied for all those years. And also her having other boyfriends and whatnot. And uh, so, I mean, those, those are, I mean, there's there's just so many things that she wouldn't even come clean about. So um, I'll just roll all them up. And uh, the jury could, could like I say, just pick one of those things as a, as a, um, as a um, perjury item. 
to convict. But as a prosecutor, my mindset is like, I could care less about the perjury charge to make that stick. What I'm looking for is how do I prosecute her for murder and bringing all the evidence of how her statements conflicted and all these other trials that there's this shroud of immunity for you bust some immunity by exposing the lies. And then you, you lay all that out there and a jury would definitely, definitely uh, convict her. Yeah, that's true, Michael Schaub. The uh, she, yeah, right now she can go wherever she wants, and uh, that's that's uh, that's sort of sad, isn't it? That she's not faced her justice yet. So this question here, TS Jack seventy two: Why, instead of talking about the defendant, do they continually talk about an unindicted co-conspirator, like talking? all about Donna in Charlie's trial. Okay, well, the reason being is um, I thought it was very good that the prosecution focused on the other Adelsons besides Charlie in this case. You need to show the conspiracy. It was a family hit job, and Wendy was involved in it, and Donna was involved in it, and it was like a, a flow of hate that went from Donna to her mom to then Ch Charlie and then them him executing um, through Katie, finding a hitman that had those kind of uh, that kind of capability of doing violence for money. And so the um, so I thought it was very key that they uh, went after him and think about it. If they weren't relevant, why would Rosh Mama had basically defended all three of them? So it was very critical for the prosecution and defense knew it. And that's why I knew uh, Rosh Mama was trying to trying his best to sterilize it and not um and not um come against them so laura berger says uh please go over wendy's guilt indicators for us there's a lot of new people here that have not heard your list okay well um i don't want to be here uh for a couple more hours um i would say there's a new list in the works it's going to be it's going to um, blow you away compared to the last one that you see if you go to uh the JTM channel here, you can look up list of indicators, I believe is the title. This would have been done back, I think about um, in January or February of this year. And so there, um, the uh, the indicators are uh, such that I think there's, it's, it's so compelling, any, any one of those you could find, um, just, like I say, just one would be enough. So if you have over a hundred, and uh, so it's, it's just gonna be, like I say, it, it's gonna be, with, with a degree of graphics presentation and, and the professionalism they had, it's going to be very, very much a strong case. No doubt in my mind. So David Cohen asked, Charlie said in the Dolce Vita that if they had evidence, they would get the plane. Isn't that what they did then? A coincidence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that basically is what uh, they did. They knew that well, as soon as Charlie's convicted that yeah, they better flee the country because they're otherwise going to be arrested. And uh, it's just going to it's going to be that much easier to prosecute. OK, actually, um, oh, this this one over here, I don't know if I if it went out or if I failed to turn it on, but I, I thought I did have it on. So I apologize if uh, there's not equal lighting here. Okay, here's a question from Julia Nielsen. Um, could the state have more on Wendy? We're unaware of new stuff came out during Charlie's trial. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's probably a lot of stuff downloaded from her phone. Think about it. We never knew about these other boyfriends and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, there's there's going to be more out there. So for anybody to say they don't have enough, think about it. You have to make the conclusion that there is not other evidence out there. So how can you make that conclusion? I'm only talking about what we do know about. Thanks to the Florida Sunshine Laws, we see all this great evidence is presented out there. And so there is so many um, gold nuggets that of uh, indicators of guilt that are, are easily able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. There's no doubt. Uh, so don't think the feds had Donna and Harvey on no flight list. You know, I don't. I'm not sure if they actually were on any kind of no-fly list, but uh, how did they know that they were fleeing town? There were some kind of tabs they had on them. 
normally on the no-fly list, that's that was uh, created after 9/11 because of terrorist threats to, and threats to national security. So, um, you know, these kind of folks are not subject to uh, to that kind of stuff. But I, I could be wrong on that. I'm not sure. But I think they definitely, obviously, they had their their uh, their their falling around, especially after the verdict of Charlie. I think that's uh, spun up the law enforcement to really keep their tabs on them. So that, that was a good question. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, Wendy, that's a good question. Um, I've not seen that before, nor have I um, addressed that. The, uh, the thing is, um, it all depends on how much security she has and whether she thought she could be busted or not. I think that would have been probably a realistic option for her if she... Uh, and maybe she maybe she's going to follow up where and, and talk to Harvey. Maybe she'll flee with Harvey now. So that's that's a good issue to raise. And uh, so hopefully they are keeping tabs on them. Okay, here we got uh, personal stuff services of shoes Shattuck. Jail records show that Charlie had eleven thousand four hundred phone calls while in jail awaiting trial. Wow, that's a lot. Think of how much money he had to pay for that. Uh, since Donna's arrest, he's had 15 phone calls. Okay, so yeah, he's still able to because uh, he's in not in prison. He's still able to have a lot of those phone calls. So so this uh, question on will Georgia prosecute Donna's trial? I, absolutely, I think it's going to be the same. Uh, dynamic duo of Georgia and Sarah. I think they worked well together. And um, so the might have, why, why, why ruin a good thing? So I think they definitely are going to be the same ones on there and hopefully they won't leave the office. So. <clears throat> this thing here is their button to donate to the channel. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm not asking for any money. I'm not in this to, uh, to do anything I, I got motivated for this i got talked into this because uh, uh my brother and his son zach and ben and some other folks are encouraging me to do this so this this kind of public talking about a case is not not my wheelhouse but i'm i'm trying to get there and and uh my commitment is to speak truth even if i get flack for it even if uh people don't like me for that and uh but that's that's what i have to do as a prosecutor defense counsel i got to bust up the politics got to bust up the uh all the things that are impeding the uh, truth from coming out. And so I, I just go after it like that. And so that's, that's why I'm just trying to be real with you guys and give you my uh, instincts and impressions. All right. Could the state delay Charlie's sentencing hearing if they think there's a likelihood he could fill it? Oh, absolutely. That's a good question because if he's uh if he's willing to give a proffer or something like that, keep in mind the uh, sentencing date is not set. It's just a uh, pre-sentencing conference. So they could uh, be talking there and say, hey, if you want to flip or something like that. So I, I think the state would be willing to give him uh, what would amount to a, uh, a deal to get all the other Adelsons behind bars. And uh, they, I think they'd be willing to entertain that. And uh, I would think that Charlie, if he ever wanted to see the light of day, he would do the same thing. This one, yeah, I remember this one. Uh, I I thought about this. This didn't come out at this last trial that I saw. That um, she, remember she couldn't spell gibbers, and then Georgia got a perfect uh, cross on her by saying, "This is um, this is the um, this is in your phone." She tried to play stupid on how do you spell gibbers, the uh, derogatory nickname. She also lied about it not even being a derogatory name. So it's just it's just like lie after lie after lie. It's like. How can anybody expect anybody to believe this nonsense? Uh, please read your list. Well, like I say, the list is, uh, I got it like a, so over 100, the most recent one, and it's going to be probably well over that. So it's um, it's definitely something that, like I say, we'll, we will uh, be presenting here. All right, let's see. All 
Um, this one here, Glory, good question. I recognize your name. Um, and I say that Georgia did hold back, I think, under the immunity in the first couple ones. But I think because Charlie was here on this one, I think she really went after. And that's something I was like, I was like wishing she would have. Because normally if somebody's given immunity and they're, they're expected to testify truthfully, if they don't testify truthfully, you got to call them out on it and go go to the uh, multiple degree um, level to uh, expose the lies and also bring rebuttal witnesses. So it was a totally different uh, strategy that she used this time in the third trial one that was uh, for Charlie. So I, I think that was a better move and that was one I was actually advocating for. So I, I thought that worked out really, really well. Um, thanks, Han. But you know what? All you got to do is un uh, unleash what you got there. You, they don't need me. I'd be If they asked me to, I'm not licensed there, but if they asked me to, I'd, I would uh, talk to them about doing that and uh, I'd, I'd be willing to uh, consult with them anyway way it could possibly help but they, they haven't talked to me and I don't, I don't think they would because I, I think it comes down to the head guy there is he it's, does he want this thing moved out does he want this executed does he want to want to bring on all the Adelsons so, so I think that's the key and I think I think um with the with the confidence and the and the um the fact they can be proud that they did s such a strong case against Charlie and it was so easy to win I think it should make them look at all the evidence differently and not be afraid to go to trial so it's um it's very interesting how a lot of places I've been to where prosecutions, if this was in, an, in any any number of other places I've been, they would have been rolled up and prosecuted like from day one. And here it takes so much time for them to get this off the ground and it's sort of like they're slow and the politics have corrupted it. So with, with Meg's gone, this really freed it up a whole lot more. So um, I think this is uh this is the way it should have been handled from day one. And think about it, the evidence hasn't changed. What's changed against the uh, evidence against uh, any of these folks? It's uh, it's uh, still been there. Um, the, the tapes were still there from 2016. All this information is really there, except for like a few things that are that are not critical to win or lose, like the uh, the stuff about Donna's flight and all that kind of stuff. So Joy had asked, uh, Ison was way too sympathetic towards Wendy. Someone mentioned that there should always be a woman there during interrogation with another female. Most women saw right through Wendy's act. Yeah, I, I did too. I mean, I even think that she was faking crying and, and, and when somebody puts their hands over their eyes like that and they're trying to, trying to cry, I think they're trying to, that's like a um, a way to try to force tears out and, and you, you're thinking tears are going to be strong, uh, streaming down your face and they're not. So that's why I think it's a, a conscious way to try to try to hide the uh, the person watching you from realizing that you're you're faking it. Uh, like I think I just answered that, Michelle Burns. That's uh, basically just comes down to will. Is it the will of uh, Jack Campbell to have justice done for all the people behind uh, this murder of Dan Markell? Um, where is he? I don't know who you're talking about there. Sorry. Yeah, uh, truth is, yeah, Rush Baum did not interview Wendy prior to trial. But uh, he actually, if you stop to think about how the questioning came out, it was so rehearsed, his cross-examination on Wendy. What happened is, um, I, I suspect, there's no doubts in my mind, that all the questions he was going to do on cross-examination, that was worked out between him and Wendy's lawyer. That's the way it would have worked. There wasn't going to be any surprises. They're both trying to protect the family. So that, that's the way that would have ha been handled. It, think about how scripted it was. I mean, it was just like she knew perfectly how to answer each question. It, it was like they were rehearsed. So um, that's, why, uh, that's why it came across so uh, awkward like that. Yeah, that's, uh, we, we said that earlier. That's going to be like, it should be at least a year and a half. Normally a murder case, you don't want to rush to fa trial too fast. Defense counsel needs to really spend time doing a lot of depositions, but then that also begs the question, why did uh, Charlie's case need an extension if there was no deposition except for two? So granted, there's a lot of other documents stuff and, and whatnot to go over, but um, yeah, thank you. Uh, must be Ben here behind, behind the scenes here, Ben Self Productions. Thank you, Ben. So um, is this on YouTube? You do list indicators um, from our channel. You can You can find it.
right here. Uh, was it smarter when you say she took 333K out of the joint account so that they can't use it against her? What do you think she made? Do you think she made Dan pay for his own hit? Um, so was it smarter when you just say she took 330 out of the joint account so they can't use it against her? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I think that, um, you know, there was so much cash flowing around among them and they had joint accounts and whatnot. So the um, Wendy was supposed to pony up her own $333,000 and uh, and for this million dollars to uh, to basically bribe Dan to move down there to Miami. But supposedly they're trying to say, oh, well, he never knew about it. But I I don't know what the ground truth of that is, but either way, that's how desperate they wanted to uh, to um, have uh, have Wendy get out of there, out of the Tallahassee area. <clears throat> yes, that's true. Wendy's guilty is Charlie, Katie, and Donna. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's so easy. Like I say, um, now that we 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 know how the jury interprets the evidence down there, there's not a bunch of. Uh, clowns there on the jury that don't know how to interpret common sense evidence that they're good people down there in Tallahassee and trust the jury because they eliminate all the politics that happens around outside of the trial. Jeff said that she drank her dinners most nights. Can you find out where she usually brought her liquor? I suspect not ABC liquors where she brought the bullet bourbon. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, that, that did not come up at trial, but, um, if she's drinking like that, it could have been spent at a routine grocery store. I don't know. Um, pretty much any grocery store now has liquor, but so, um, and maybe it was just because on a list, certain specialty types of uh, drinks is why she had to go to a liquor store. But yeah, why wouldn't you go to the one that was close by your house? All right. So, um, yeah, so Wendy knew a dance schedule. That's why she emailed him. He's going to be around the uh, 14th and 18th. He said he was, but then she was also aware of the fact that he was uh, scheduled to leave that Saturday, the day before he got uh, two shots to the head and face. And so, yeah, I mean, this is like a really another really strong indicator. And think about it. So if we know the Adelsons were behind it. And let's just say if you just want to stop to think. So Charlie and his mom orchestrated this murder. And if you 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 for a uh, second entertain the idea that they would have done this behind Wendy's back, which uh, sounds so preposterous. Um, but let's just say that the um, you're going to have a couple of uh, uh, bumbling idiot knuckleheads going up there with weapons to kill the boy's dad, Dan Markell. And you're not going to know where the kids are and make it, make sure the kids aren't there when the uh, murder happens. And so that's why I think, there was so set on, we got to make sure that uh, the kids are not in the house. And in fact, I mean, even Luis said he wasn't going to do it if, uh, if that wasn't the instruction. So, um, and think about it, the fact that she doesn't have the kids in there with Dan, I think that they were thinking it makes it look more like they wouldn't have done it because, oh gosh, it could have been, if it was Hitman that they hired, it could have been turned turned out where the kids would have been, uh, you know, seeing their dad get murdered. So, I, but then again, if it would have happened, I, who knows? Maybe they didn't even care if the boys saw that, right? Yeah, uh, going to Switzerland. Um, but I believe Sw Switzerland is, uh, they're going to have an extradition treaty with us. So I don't think Sw uh, Switzerland would work at all. Any of the EU countries, uh, we, we would have extradition uh, treaties with them, um, agreements. And uh, so they would cooperate and det actually detain the, the, uh, the um, folks with the murder worn out for their arrest and uh, like Vietnam, they don't have, they wouldn't hold them at all. At least that's not the, the agreement we have with them. So we would have had to like grease the skids and would have taken a while to make sure that Vietnam was energized enough to want to go after uh, uh, any kind of detention and uh, transfer of uh, Donna and Harvey. Okay, thanks, River. I appreciate that. But like I say, I, I'm just trying to support the truth, and I'm trying to support the Markels. That's what that's what this is all about, you know. And uh, Mr. Stubbs, seventy five. I remember you. I think you're the uh, the horse lady somewhere in Oklahoma or something. And uh, that name stuck out to me. Uh, Wendy's fake laryngitis is huge. She claims she couldn't talk until Friday. So yeah, think about that. That's that's another great indicator. She, um, 
she was talking to all these people day and night and uh, talking on the phone all Friday morning. Yet Dan called. She won't talk to him. When did she call Dan? Only after he was expected to be murdered before around uh, uh, before noon that day. So it's, it's very telling. And um, so that, 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 that's a good one to bring up. And like I said, there's so many others. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's very nice. I'm thanks for door glory, um, for your, um, I don't know what you call it a super chat or something. You say, thanks to John Carl et al for spending your own money on equipment for these broadcasts. Oh, thank you much. Yeah. And I'm going to, I owe money, some money for, to Ben still for, uh, Ben's effort, extra efforts. And, uh, he can use it to build up his flight hours before he gets on with a um, regional airline. This one here, uh, that's been, that's come up uh, a number of times and I've never heard a direct answer from anybody on, on, on any of the government documents is how they knew to locate her. I assume they probably called some folks and said, that's a routine hangout of her for Friday afternoon. So that's, they might've called, uh, they probably would have called the university and somebody would have answered and said, yeah, she's normally there Friday afternoon. So that's my guess of how it happened, but, um, don't know for sure, but it was a good move by them. I really, I, I really thought that was a great deal by a uh, tech device to go ahead and bring her back. And, and that was the, another point I can tell you that who in their right mind would get in a police car after you've already been to Trescott, you see all the police cars there and all the, uh, evidence technician bands, all the crime scene tape, and uh, all that busy activity going on uh, at the uh, house where your kids had just spent the night from, and you don't even bother to call the daycare to find out if they're safe, if they're, not, if they're still in the house or not. I, I thought she was going to, I thought the evidence would have turned out that Dan had left her a message saying he dropped all the kids when he called her about 9.04 to 9.06 time frame, and because uh, he dropped off the kids about nine, but she never answered the phone. And uh, so we don't know what was on the voicemail message, but she testified, as I recall, that she never did uh, confirm where the boys were at that morning when she uh, drove on Trescott. And of course, she flip flopped on whether she actually drove on Trescott, another indicator of guilt, huge indicator of guilt. <clears throat> um, will, will you do a panel with mentor lawyer? Many enjoy both analyses and agree you should come together for a chat of two brilliant minds. Call it the tale of two mentors, mentors. Okay. Are you in? Um, I'll just say that, uh, you know, I, I met him down there, but uh, I know John was there the whole week of trial with him. And I'll just say that I don't, I, I could, um, there was, I'm sure there'd be no interest on his level. And I, and so I don't, I don't even think I, I need to entertain that question, but um, I do appreciate all the stuff he's done. And uh, so it's, it's, he's provided so much of that evidence out there that we were able to see the, uh, the different interviews of uh, the different detectives. And uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, we, we're much better informed and educated about the guilt of all these people because of his efforts. So, so good job there. Um, so this is ridiculous. They have not arrested her. Who else does she know? Well, keep in mind, Charlie, um, excuse me, Harvey. See, there I, there I did a slip. Harvey was very well connected with a former state senator who would have been spending a lot of time up in Tallahassee. He was a lawyer. His name was Weinstein. And um, the uh, older, they had, the, there was a father and son lawyer team and Peter Weinstein was the son. Michael, I think was the father. And so him and him and uh, him and Harvey were like old buds and best friends as I understand it. And so Charlie was able to um, get through the, uh, either is either the periodontal school or the uh, dental school when he was actually flunking out because of, heat that harvey put on the school there and i guess harvey was a, a contributing member a founding member something like that so and the judge supposedly intervened as well that was, was in the police report so they're basically able to intimidate people to, to to back off on things from that episode with him and his um issues with uh not not passing the grade in school and so and think about it weinstein also was uh the lawyer initial lawyer for Charlie, and if you remember the wiretap, listen on YouTube, there's a wiretap um, that picks up a phone call between Jim Lewis, the attorney that was for Sigfredo, the initial one, he got another one later, but the initial one was uh, Jim Lewis. And Jim Lewis, they have on wiretap talking to Katie, and he's telling her that, you know, the lawyer for uh, for Charlie 
as a, you know, confirming that he's keeping quiet and for her to do the same. So, I mean, it's just so reeks of, uh, you know, all them guys circling the wagon, wagons, the Adelsons and, uh, and also the, um, the, um, the uh, lawyers for Katie. So when Katie had those other two lawyers involved right there, that alone proves that this was a conspiracy and a hit job. It hasn't come out in any of the trials, but you guys go back, go to YouTube and um, type in the, um, uh, do the search for the uh, video of Katie talking to uh, Sigfredo's lawyer. And I forget what the uh, exact words of the title were, but um, that's one of the things that uh, Deep Dive True Crime, I believe, might have presented. So, um, but that, that to me left zero doubt that this was a, a joint operation involving both the Adelsons and um, the actual Hitman team. <clears throat> M. Christine says, at one point, Christy said the TV could not be repaired. She called Charlie to talk about whether she could just get a new one or get it fixed. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, an 18-minute phone call, that, that's all they're supposedly talking about. So, and think about what Jeff Lacoste says, that how bizarre that whole thing was they had to watch a movie on the crack screen it was sort of like just a throwaway type tv you'd have in a dorm room and uh not, nothing uh sophisticated about it and yet they had a better tv that they could have used so it was just it just goes to show the calculating nature that jeff was supposed to be framed he's supposed to remember the cracks of tv and the, that right there alone i think is a beautiful point as a prosecutor i'd raise to show that she actually knew about the tv code because think about the tv code if that's played between um, um, the call between Donna and Charlie, where that she's talking about who is doing the bump, and she's saying, "Well, it was like she mentioned the TV and five, meaning five thousand dollars." So the TV is the code for the murder of Dan, and then the five was indicating the five thousand dollars that was demanded by the undercover officer. So what they did was they had the way that the if you follow the TV code logic of the conspiracy. The way we know that that uh, Wendy was a part of the conspiracy with the TV code planning as well was because she told the Geek Squad repair guy about the hitman joke. So that was another impression. Like, why would I be joking about a hitman when, you know, an hour before Dan's getting murdered? And uh, actually, it was a couple hours before. And uh, so why would you mention that if you were guilty? So it's sort of like it was they were so obvious that about different things to throw off the police and think, well, what, what kind of people would talk about hiring a hitman if, if they're really guilty? So I think that was just a, 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 a ruse that they used that worked for a long time. And, uh, and then the fact that she wouldn't let Jeff replace the TV and insisted that the TV stay broken, that is just so compelling evidence to show that the TV was the code. It was the alibi for why she was going to be home because of Dan. Think about it. If Jeff LaCasse would have replace that TV and that whole, um, I need to fix the TV and uh, create an alibi would have been, been gone. So obviously there could have been other alibis or whatnot, have other repair guys. So, um, so in any event, great question. Sean, why didn't they call the people that, that Wendy was having lunch with? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't, I've not seen that any police reports and whatnot, but um, I know that some of those were like, psychology type people or university type people there so that's what i do when i'm in, involved in a case no matter what side i'm on I'm, I'm interviewing a lot of witnesses a lot of the friends of the parties involved and you just don't really see that in most prosecutions for some reason but that to me is like you just get such huge uh huge victories of a different piece of evidence that all fits together and helps win your case yeah, Donna was uh, 63, so think about it. She's 73 now, and uh, wow. So this question here, what's your sign? I thought it was kind of weird that Rashman kind of implied that the court was helping to keep exonerating evidence out of the trial during his closing. Is that common? Yeah. Um, so yeah that was sort of like a, it was a as i recall i think i know what you're talking about he was objecting uh, or he was referencing in his closing uh, i dare i try to get this evidence in the prosecution objected so yeah in a way he's basically blaming the judge that's, that's a good good catch and uh so i i think it's a lot of times it's sometimes done that way but um and i've even done that sometimes when i'm on a roll with the uh with a witness and it's i'm just crushing the other side I, i'm thinking of a like there's one prosecutor I went against in uh, civilian court that 
every time I'm like on a roll, would just come up with frivolous objections just to try to throw my client off, just to try to like to derail the momentum we're getting. And I, I just thought that was so, so uh, shady. And uh, it didn't work in the end, but it's like just objection after objection after objection after objection, just, just, just trying to, just trying to obstruct justice basically and, and the truth from coming out. So I would say that, um, you know, what I liked about this trial, there wasn't as many objections as I thought. Now, granted, he picked up a lot of steam after the first day and objecting a lot. And um, I would, um, I, 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 didn't, I don't like to see that because it holds up the trial a lot. I, what I've had before with a judge is he basically says, all right, prosecution, give me all your exhibits. And uh, we call up, we get called up there before the jury comes out. And this would be like in a pretrial hearing goes, okay, what, uh, any objections by the defense? And right there, the defense has got to come up with their objections and everything's already, you know, admitted into evidence before the trial. So there's none of this laying foundation or anything like that other than what's necessary so the uh, jury understands how it was gathered. But, um, yeah, so anyway, that was, um, that was something that prosecution could object to, but if if I was uh, if I was them, I probably would just let it slide anyway. Because, like I say, you don't really want to object uh, unless it's really something that's critical that's hurting your case, or they're completely misstating something. But um, yeah, making a dig on the judge—I mean, that's that's not going to go over good with the jury. So yeah, good point. So when um, I'm sorry. The uh, we, Wendy lied and said the divorce was not contentious. This time she agreed it was. Yeah, that's true. She, uh, she I remember in her previous time she tried to try to downplay that, and now this time she uh, she changed her tune. So yeah, that's a that's another thing that just goes to show you how how poor of a witness she was. Yeah, Kai Ocean, uh This is a uh, this is a good point here that. After the uh, wasted uh, trip that the uh, Sigfredo and Luis would have been thinking, it's like, hey, we need better intel. We don't want to try to drive around and follow this guy down. So I think that's also key for how they got that information from Wendy. Yeah, that's another that's another uh, dagger that would help create uh, proof beyond all doubt. In fact, that's what I do. If I had a case like Wendy's, if I was a prosecutor, I wouldn't argue that I proved the case beyond reasonable doubt. I would argue that I proved it beyond all doubt. There's no, there's going to be no doubt in your mind that she was involved in it. And that's what I do in trials all the time. I never use the standard beyond a reasonable doubt. I, I, I pick my case apart so much that I, I always argue uh, that I'm proving the case, uh, you know, beyond all doubt, whether it's the, that the, the government hasn't proven it and they've proven that they're innocent. If I'm a defense attorney or if I'm a prosecutor, I say, um, I'll prove it beyond all doubt and uh, you will be able to go and leave this knowing that you did the right thing. So I think that's um, that's the way it normally shakes out. I've never I've never seen that, uh, you know, not work out or or um, folks saying, well, I think you're too strong and oversold or anything like that, because really the jury gets this. I mean, if you would ask um, the juries, would they have convicted Charlie if the standard was beyond all doubt? Absolutely. They would. There's no doubt in my mind they would have said yes. So this one here, Watcher, if you know someone's going to be killed and you don't do anything about it, can you get charged for that? No, because you don't, you're, not, you're not taking any part of any uh, conspiracy. And um, so Wendy, um, in this particular case, like I say, all the actions she was doing definitely show that she was um, she was involved in the planning. There's no doubt a jury would find the same thing. All you got to do is get the right prosecutor presented. Yeah, obviously getting nervous. I think that's a, that's a, uh, that's a given. And uh, yeah, I think thankfully uh, Jeff Lacasse left early. I mean, he would have been exonerated anyway, but I th they didn't realize that uh, he was leaving a day early. And I, I think that just shows how much he was set up. All right, so I don't know what you mean by kick it down to 2000. I don't know what you mean by that. 
Michael Altman says, uh, yeah, that's two weeks ago. Donna was managing Charlie getting off and the whole family was having a Thanksgiving dinner together. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe they, um, maybe they had another overseas trip planned or whatever. So, and, uh, maybe they were, they were going to say that, well, we had already bought the tickets to go to Vietnam, but you know, it wasn't a round trip ticket. It was a one way. So that wouldn't fly. So first one says that she orchestrated the whole thing and set Charlie and Donna to take the fall so that the whole Ailson estate goes to her and the boys. Yeah, I don't even know if it was so much that it was that calculated in terms of financial windfall. And um, I know I've talked to um, someone that's a clinical psychologist about this case that uh, has, has gone over this uh, umpteen hours and uh, reviewed, reviewed so many things. And uh, the conclusion was that actually Wendy is the one that was the real mastermind of this. And when you stop to think about how people could be played and uh, like some of the comments here tonight about the um, the um, the fake buying a house, if that was faked or not. I mean, that would be really interesting to see if she did put an offer in. But of course, you could put an offer in and not intend to follow through. A lot of houses can have an issue and you can back off the deal and get your uh, deposit back. So. <clears throat> Okay, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'd have to see what we collaborate about, and uh, so. But anyway, like I say, I, I really think that this comes down to we, 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 um, we, we either be on team justice for Markels or we're not, and I'm, I'm all about that. And I just, you know, whatever people are doing on uh, channels to uh, bring out different stuff. This is not a ratings match. This is not an issue where I'm trying to um, outdo anybody. And I think everybody, the more ratings everybody gets, to expose and bring knowledge to this case, I think it's going to help put heat on the government to do the right thing. And, and so I, I think that's, um, I think that's good, but, uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't have his contact info, but yeah, if he wants to reach out to me, mine's on my YouTube thing here. Oh, that's a good thing, uh, that I forgot to mention here. Um, Shell Sands, I think Peter Weinstein is Wendy's God for that. That is, um, that's actually Peter Weinstein. No, they, that's the son. So it's actually the father, Michael. I believe the father's name, Michael. So Michael was the judge that was best friends with Harvey. So he would be like close to Harvey's age. Peter was a younger attorney, and I guess he was running for state office. And as soon as, um, as soon as Charlie's name started getting the news and whatnot as being a possible suspect, um, um, when that 2016 hit came out, then he dropped uh, he dropped Charlie like a rock. He's running for state office, but. Definitely, there was uh, from that wiretap. Like I say, there was corroboration, collaboration going on between uh, Sigfredo and um, his lawyer Jim Lewis, as well as Charlie's Lew uh, attorney, who we knew was uh, Peter Weinstein. So, good point. I appreciate that. So. Um, So JP says, I think it's going to be at least two years before she goes to trial. I mean, she's going to be, oh, wow. I, I just don't, the longer it lasts to go to trial, I just don't see her making it. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I would be, I, I think her family's going to be worried about whether she makes it as well. And um, I, I think she's, in a situation like that, you got somebody that old and you're facing murder one charges and all that pressure and the, 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 this horrible food. I know somebody put a comment I saw today. It's like they used to be in food distribution um for meals and they said that the prisons had the absolute worst food all the worst food went to the prisons and uh and the same would apply to jails jails are probably even, even worse a lot of them or most of them so when you think about the lack of nutrition the lack of uh the lack of good sleep you're not gonna she's gonna be gonna be on this uh she's gonna be wearing basically that plastic uh top assuming that plastic uh, paper she's basically wearing paper clothes probably to keep her from uh, uh killing herself Okay. Um, I just put something in timeout, so I don't know. I saw some uh, derogatory thing or about some other person, so I don't. Uh, let's try to be professional on this. I I don't. 
I don't think we need to go down that road. I, I don't know what it was about, if it was a legitimate comment or not, but I saw something derogatory uh, about referencing somebody. So oh thanks, Ben. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh Ben, Ben, you did a great job setting this up tonight, and John was the one that I'm recommending it. So great job. I guess I'm not getting complaints about sound or anything like that. So <clears throat> Okay, when he's fine as long as he doesn't flip on her, but even then she's in good shape. So Looper, uh, that's a really bizarre comment to make. You obviously don't know this case, and uh, I would just uh, ask you to to get further informed on this, and um, because I, I, a jury would not have the same conclusion you do. Mark my words. Yeah, I think there's going to be. Um, um, I guess Katie was saying that. Kathleen Turner play a good Wendy. I, there's going to be a movie about this, no doubt about it. I mean, this is this is definitely picking up steam. Yeah, Banks needs to be invested. He's getting up there, really in age two. I think he's probably at least eighty years old. So nothing's going to happen to him. But yeah, it's just really, it's just really. He's the one that started this uh, train wreck and not getting these guys to trial. So really, really disappointing. It's just an absolute outrage, and that, that's why I decided to jump on this case and talk about it. Uh, Eve here asks, do you think Donna takes this seriously? She literally rolled her eyes when the judge mentioned the serious charges and plus the open jail, jail calls with Charlie. Well, I think she takes um, the threat of prosecution seriously enough to leave the country and leave everything behind, including, like, say, the Sunshines, Wendy, all that she'd have left behind. And um, so, in that sense, she took it seriously. But like I say, I think it's so she's so defiant and smug about this whole thing. And she's like, how dare you think you're going to get me? And so um, I think that her defiance would be probably the thing that tries to keep her uh, surviving. But uh, I don't know any attorney that's going to talk to her and, and, and bluntly tell her you got any chance at all in winning this case. Yeah, Jeff Lacasse. I mean, he's what 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 a what a hot mess they they uh, made to to have Wendy set her targets on him to set set him up and frame him. Um, wow, that was uh, that was uh, such a great job he did in every single trial. And uh, the the jury definitely looks at somebody like him as you know what this guy, this guy was that close to being um, truly being called in there and given the right act by the police because they would have suspected him to do it. And think about it. Remember, he said that Wendy, her two two most common things she complained about was was uh, Dan Markell and how much she hated Tallahassee. So if she hated Tallahassee so bad and he wanted to leave. It's almost like she's priming him to like, you help me leave Tallahassee and you help get rid of my problems. In a way, it's almost like I call it like a grooming effect. She was like grooming him to either be the hitman, And if he didn't buy that, then he, he was going to be the fall guy. So he obviously wasn't biting because he's a stand up guy, former military guy as well. And so he, he's, he's not the kind of guy that's going to kill somebody. He's, he's a he's a guy that. Um, she she's a wrong he's the absolute worst guy she could mess with and set up uh this one here um who chooses sushi when coming off for not being able to eat for a month yeah i mean see that's what i'm saying you guys really get these little nitty-gritty details and um so on a case where you got this much minutia of activity between parties and stuff like that, that's why it's good to have a tiger team approach to stuff because the uh, there's stuff like that 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 I hadn't thought of, but you know something like that can can grab a juror and they think of stuff like that. So, Demi, you're an example. You're a prime example of why juries are so good. They they cut out the politics. They understand how criminals act. And uh, like I say, not everybody gets it all in every single detail. Nobody gets every single possible detail that a jury would pick up. But the more you've done jury trials, the more you understand the flavor kind of stuff that people pick up. And so that's something that a juror would pick up on. And uh, it's not necessarily something that a prosecutor would argue that. 
And I, I don't think I would argue that, but like I say, that's something that um, is telling for some people. Now, uh, some people, maybe they do want to choose uh, sushi after not eating for a month, but yeah, a lot of people, they probably wouldn't. So good, good, good job there. Uh, would a different judge preside over Donna's trial? You know, that's, uh, that's uh, I can't remember if this judge ever was on uh, a regular rotation for criminal trials or not. They they could reassign it again, so it's it's too much um, around Robin. They don't they don't try to have the same judge be in necessarily every single case, as we saw here. So the other judge got excused. I think he had some other issues that uh, prevented him from uh, following through on it. So KCL, you asked about exculpatory evidence. Um, you know, I, I've heard folks say, well, you know, Donna said um, when they asked on the wiretap, hey, does this have to do with Wendy? She, uh, Donna right away says, no, 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 no. You know, she said it like, don't go there. And I'm sure she's worried about Charlie starting to run his mouth. Well, Mom, it's probably had to do with Wendy up there. That's why she had a nip in the butt. I mean, she did not. She knew that possibly it was on wiretap. She had to nip that in the butt. Now, somebody might try to say, oh, well, see, that's exonerates Wendy. It's like, you know what? Juries ain't going to buy that when they see this other stuff, all this other hundred plus indicators of her involvement. So all evidence cases either been witness testimony, circumstantial. Yeah. I, as I've said before, evidence that's circumstantial versus direct. A lot of that, well, most cases don't have the absolute direct evidence. The circumstantial is direct evidence is evidence. And the, um, it's not a it's not a distinction in mind. In fact, I think a lot of times circumstantial is better. So Wendy setting up Jeff Lac Jeff Lacasse the way she did, think about it. You can't you can't argue that. How are you going to argue he wasn't set up when you look at all the actions she did to string it along, jerk him around? She was cheating on him, and she's doing all this stuff, talking about the hit man, talking about the real hit uh, planning that was done the year before, just five days before Dan Markell was murdered. So you look at all that kind of stuff. It's just like so eer creepy, eerie that he was able to escape being uh, uh, set up as, like I say, the fall guy. And so this um, this circumstantial stuff is just rock solid. Think about it for Charlie. The uh, Charlie never said he committed a murder on any tape. He didn't. So he had what you'd call circumstantial evidence. But like I say, it's a big, it's a big thing that I I, I think people that that maybe don't understand evidence while well, try to get in that distinguishment. Like, well, we don't really understand. There's not a lot of direct evidence. It's like, you know what? Circumstantial is usually even better because direct evidence is more malleable. It's more subject to uh, cross-examination and impeachment and stuff like that. If it's a, if it's an eyewitness testimony. And so therefore Wendy's own actions, Charlie's own words, Donna's own words, and Wendy's uh, detailed actions and, and, and uh, the, the things that show she was planning is, I think it's definitely an indicator uh, just as strong that she would go down. So it's it's really baffling why she's not arrested yet. This is on one of the indicators, by the way, Nashville, Tennessee. I guess you're uh, somewhere near me then. Um, nobody fixes TV days. What a joke. Yeah, that's, that's one of the indicators I had. It's like, you don't call the geek squad and say, hey, I bought a TV. And it's just some little thing. It's like cost 150 bucks. You're really going to call a geek squad and have a warranty out there to uh, have them come out and fix it and all that kind of stuff. So the whole thing was just an absolute joke. You, these are intelligent people. They had to toss it out and, and uh, bought a new one. So so them being so smart trying to come up with this alibi is actually such a big, uh, such a big uh, indicator of guilt. It's just huge. Yeah, I, I'm surprised Geek Squad didn't come out there. Um, I know that if they have them listed as a name, as a name possible defendant, but... Then again, the case was so strong that he needed that. So think of all the stuff they left on the table. They left a lot of meat on the bones. And uh, yet they still got a slam dunk win that even if the, the burden of proof is beyond all doubt, they would have won it, no doubt. This one I think we talked about earlier. There's there's not going to be an investigation to Willie Meggs. I mean, prosecutors have discretion on whether to bring cases or not. And you know, there's conversations, any conversation they made from, you know, if there was a conversation made from a, from the uh, Michael Weinstein to say, hey, make sure nothing happens to these folks. These are my good friends. I'm the godfather of Wendy. You don't dare touch her. I mean, Megs was saying him were sort of buds from what the uh, reports are. So I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the way politics works. That's the way people with connections don't, don't face their uh, day of reckoning.
but at least these things are starting to move in the right direction. The um, I still think the invitation telling her to bring bullet burger may have been faked or at least added to one. Who sends an invite and tells you what what you're you're to gift? Rude. Yeah, I do think that's really a bizarre thing as well, and uh, that's been coming up in some chats lately. So I, I think that's very much a um, um, something that's worth looking into and maybe it was just on a list. So really of all the things she's going to pick, she picks a bullet bourbon. So I just thought that was a little bit strange. Well, I'm almost going on to two hours here. So I didn't realize that while wow, you guys have had some good questions and, um, uh, sorry, Renee Fields. I'm sorry if my mic's going in and out. I, I don't, there's nothing indicating it on here. Um, I'll, ch I'll check with uh, Ben later on that. Yeah, they said the bullet bourbons are requested by name, but was it on a list of different things or was it like, Wendy, you must buy bullet bourbon? That That's the thing that I would want to know, but that's never come out. Um, prosecutor can ask leading questions when cross-examining like a witness. I like behavior panel, but not very versed in law. Yeah, I don't, I guess that's not, I'm, I'm not going to go into that one. Okay, so, um, all right, so that's being worked. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So I don't have a deadline on that uh, or, or a suspense of when I can tell you it's going to come out, but it, it's, it's being worked here. So, so I, I'm going to go, go ahead and shut it down now. So thank you much for joining. And uh, if you have, uh, if you have any other really important questions you think that I didn't answer here tonight, if you want to just, if, if it's important enough to you, go ahead and shoot me an email at jurytrialmentor at gmail.com. And um, I'll either email you back then, or I can put it on the show here live if you want it to go on the live and uh, we'll go from there. So thank you for your, uh, thank you for your pursuit of justice for this case. Again, this is all about DeMar Kells, the injustice they have endured. And really the thing that really gets my goat is, the denial of uh, visitation for the boys is just the absolute most, most, uh, you know, it just so much salt in the wounds to the wonderful Markel family that uh, John and I got a chance to meet. And uh, so I, it's just, it's a thing that's going to keep driving us to keep, uh, keep sounding the alarm that these people are, they're not done arresting the Adelsons and uh, they, they can't let their foot off the gas. So thank you for everything and your, and your great questions. And, um, the um <laughs> I, I appreciate your uh, your support for all the Markels. So thanks and have a good night.